Welcome everyone. And um, did everybody have a chance to look at the minutes? Yeah. Yes. Any do, you want, do you want to call roll? Oh, I do. Yes. Thank you, Elaine. Um, <laughs> I'm so disoriented here. Mm -hmm. um, I know right. we're excited, but. <laughs> Quickly, and then we'll do the minutes. Okay. Mary Lou Lawrence. Here. Steve Brown. Here. Brooke Jewell. Here. Sarah Pease. Here. Uh, Elaine Breslow. Present. Uh, Megan Brinzi. Here. Present. Alex Viteri. Hi. I'll get here. Sorry. Uh, and um, Carolyn Coffee is here. here. Yeah, okay. I didn't want you to drive off the road, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Captain yeah. Harvey is here. Okay, so now has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes? <laughs> All right, any corrections, additions, questions? Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from the uh, September meeting? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, minutes are approved. And so that is Megan, right? You yes, first? director's yeah. report. I don't okay. Have the agenda in front of me. It's okay. Um, so October is one of our favorite months at the library because we can dress it up a little bit and have a little bit of fun. Um, so we have two programs in particular, um, Haunted Objects and Bigfoot Relics is coming next week. Uh, or tomorrow, excuse me. And last week we had the paranormal couple from the Travel Channel. Um, I think that's tomorrow. That one's tomorrow. The paranormal. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Legends and Haunts of New England was last week. Um, we had 12 people come. It was um, so this is something Megan D had planned and Allison took over. Um, so it was directed towards teenagers, but we got all adults which is fine. So people, people came and enjoyed it. Um, what was the age distribution just out of curiosity? So uh, from what I understand, it was just all uh, like uh, middle adults, I would okay. say. Um, so I think people were just familiar with, uh, sometimes um, it, they might have not been Cohasset residents. Sometimes these ghost hunters have followers. And so they're kind of like an automatic audience that will come to, oh. to, to each one of their programs regarding, depending on where they are. Um, so that followers. might've been the case. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they get a little fan club going. Um, so we'll probably see that next week as well. But, you know, I, I'm happy to have people from other communities come see our awesome library and then they'll come here forever and ditch their hometown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and we have our pumpkins and haystacks outside, which is my favorite thing to do. My husband calls it the annual cover my car and hay um, <laughs> yeah. event. Ah, ah. Um, so we have a lot of fun doing that. Um, Allison, our new young adult librarian, put out a jar of M&Ms this month just to start as a conversation piece so that she can start meeting people. Um, so she did her first guess how many M&Ms are in the jar. We had 157 wow. people um, mm -hmm. submit. Uh, so it was very popular and it was a great way for her to meet people because they would come right in. Yes. So our winner was Andrew Buckley. He has not come to claim his prize yet. Um, we do believe he was a teenager, but we're not 100% sure. Um, so. Did they just do it on? Yeah, so it's on social media. We contacted the contact that was on the slip. Oh, um, she said that was a problem because his email was full or something like that. Oh, so and it bounced back? back? Yes. Uh, is it Jack Buckley's son, do you know? I don't think so. No. No. Okay. no, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ask around. Yeah, ask around. Because um, he, he has a whole um, thing of M&M's waiting for him. <laughs> <laughs> a big giant jar. Um, so, you know, she has something else now to engage folks as they come by the, the YA room, and she's going to keep that going. So as simple as it is, she's really been able to yeah. make, cool. make relationships with people. After a big deal for you. I'm hearing about that. Yeah, so she has snacks available after school for kids. Um, she's starting to do like um, if you go and do a tr uh, not a treasure hunt um, scavenger. scavenger, yeah, scavenger hunt through the library, and you you know you'll oh, get wonderful. a prize, you'll get a snack at the end because food is the the driver for mm -hmm. for teenagers, and they all come here after school to use our vending machine. So she's kind of trying to like lure them from the community room into the teen room and and enjoy some productive activities rather than not being not productive. Um, so that's really exciting. And as we move on, I'll tell you a little bit more about some other things that she's doing and other things that are happening at the library. Um, our heiress report and financial report were both submitted. 
So our ARIS report was great. Um, all of our numbers were up as they should have should be because we were still pretty deep in COVID last year. So um, our numbers are up. We're happy about that. Um, I'm not making any real predictions about any of our collection because we're still in kind of this strange space. Um, but it is, you know, it's interesting to see. Um, one of the things that we did see is our e-materials. Um, I was wondering if once we opened back up, if that number would go down a little bit, that people were like, okay, good. I don't have to use this ebook platform anymore. But in fact, our ebooks um, actually went up. So people who are using them liked them and they're gonna continue to, to use our platform, which is great. Um, financial report was fairly straightforward. Um, we are compliant. So we will be getting our state grant this year and um, all the things that come with um, being certified, which is um, sharing materials with other libraries, our database subscriptions, our ILS, um, being part of a network, all of those things come with being certified. So that's fantastic. Um, just some ongoing maintenance things. We had a little trouble with our heat that was fixed. Um, we're scheduling a, a deep clean um, coming up very soon. Um, I think we're, we're ready. Uh, through COVID, we really didn't have, I think it was a yearly thing before I came. And through COVID, we didn't have really enough people here that I felt that we needed a deep clean. But now we're, we're definitely ready for a deep clean. So um, because we're open seven days a week, whatever day works for the cleaning company and for our facilities department, we will close that day to the public and we'll have training for the staff. So it's actually a nice opportunity to get our CPR training done and some of the other things that we'd like to brush up our skills in. Um, and hopefully we won't be closed for an entire day, but, um, but we'll see. Um, Oh, another thing that we did was added a lot of shelving and display space in the young adult room. So I took some pictures, but please walk by and go check it out. Um, Allison's, bless you. Allison's done just a fantastic job of lighting and brightening up that space. It is fun. It's like it looks. It's like exciting to go in there. She's got lights going, and she's got great um, Stranger Things theme on one side, and she's got some um, Halloween books on another side. So it's fun. Um, Let's see. So the story walk this morning went to the ASP um, pumpkin patch down the street. So you can check it out there. That just happened this morning. I actually haven't even seen it yet. It was such a great idea. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, I think Sharon Sharon thought of it, and um, yeah, it'll be great. So I think we'll leave it there, even past the pumpkin patch, um, and then hopefully move it from there um, back to the common after we get all of our permissions to do so. Um, Allison is doing teen foodie Fridays. Um, so it's it, like a, you can either make it, um, at the library or you can take it with you. So like on Friday, she's doing s'mores. So we're not actually melting marshmallows, but you can make your s'more. Um, two Fridays from now, she has a mud, put a mud pie pudding mm -hmm. thing that you can make. So, um, they can take it with them in their bag and just bring it home with them, or they can make it at the library and have a snack here. Um, she's working on an escape the room. Um, yeah, and we're excited about this. She um, did a webinar on how to, uh, through ALA, on how to um, create an escape the room. So that'll be fun for teens, but she's also hoping maybe some families. Will what what does that mean? Yeah. Um, so escape the room is generally, um, uh, generally like companies or private companies were doing them and they were in like a, usually a strip mall. But it's set up so that you get a set of, you go into a room and you get a set of clues and you have to um, answer the clues as you go through the room. And then finally at the end, you'll get a key to get out. So it's kind of a, it's a teamwork, it's working together, it's solving a problem, multiple problems. Um, great, great fun for families. It's great fun for everybody. It's like one of those. Did you? Yeah. Did, oh, that's right. You yeah. told me you were going to do that. So fun. Yeah. Yeah, the two families and. And then there was actually multiple rooms. You're in one room, and then like a secret, like the bookcase opens and it goes into another room. Yeah. Like there was actually three or four little spaces. Oh, that's so cool. Where, where was this? It was called Boxaroo. It's just on Court Street. Boxaroo? Yeah, it's really fun. There was one at the Kingston Mall for a while. Yeah. I don't know if it's still there. Sure it's on Court it Street in Boston? Yeah, it was great. Hmm. It could be for adults too. It's not necessarily for kids. It's actually kind of hard. 
<laughs> you can get stuck in the, yeah. in the room for a while. Yeah. I think yeah. they give you a certain amount of power, and then they pooch yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah it's, it's fun. Great. Yeah. Um, so she's taken, she took a course on that. So that's good. Um, we have the community preschool coming to do trick or treating here on, um, on Monday on Halloween. We're all thrilled. We all have our costumes. Um, actually, uh, Justin, who's the new marketing person at, um, town hall arranged this to have the, the kids kind of marketing drop. person. Yeah. He's the new, um, communication specialist is, and so he started oh. just a few months ago. Um, he's an absolute delight and he, um, his background is in reporting hmm. and he's been doing a really great job of um, kind of connecting town town business to maybe local local things that are going on and making sure that we are you know covering those things and involved and any you know connections like this where the preschool is looking for somewhere to go trick-or-treating that's safe he's like oh we have plenty of town buildings well, you know they can go to all the town buildings so he's um he's a huge asset to the town he's, he's fairly great. new yeah he's yeah, really he's, great he's involved with the um 143 tv also like a little bit obviously because he's a reporter and as soon as you talk to him you can immediately tell that he's a television reporter. oh yeah 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 he lives in town um, yeah. um i lost carolyn i'm gonna call her back because she's driving and it's easier for her to answer than it is to call i'm sorry go ahead no, it's okay. thanks for calling back yeah no problem <laughs> Um, so any updates that you see on like uh, on the unfortunate emergency that was over the weekend, all the updates, he was in the, um, the police van and he was mm -hmm. the one pushing out all the updates. So he's kind of an on site for emergencies, but also does some community help with community programs and he's just awesome. Um, we have cake and conversations with the zoning board coming up and we just had cake and conversations with the natural resource officer that we share with Norwell, which is the animal control officer and he came to talk about coyotes. Um, that was a great showing. Ted um, called me after the uh, program and let me know that when he went out to his car, there was a coyote outside underneath hiding the, underneath the picnic table. And he just thought this was hilarious because we were talking about oh coyotes and he was like, gosh. he's probably just waiting, you know, yeah. listening to the <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Oh, uh, that is really. It's under the funny. picnic table outside. There yeah, in the yeah. Uh, in the, we're near rack, kind okay. of near okay. the playground. Yeah. But still, that is so populated there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we get a lot of everywhere. animals back in that area and near that playground. So are the kids dropping food, maybe. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, we had a fox at one point too. It was making rounds in that area. Um, so other than that, um, we are still working on the final draft of the strategic plan. It needs a little bit of work and a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of kind of some connections. Um, we're closing up our uh, SEIU union negotiations. Those went very, very well. Um, I, I thought <laughs> um, for everybody and um, we're the staff's getting together to do the website design committee and we're looking forward to our first kickoff meeting. Right now we're kind of just doing research regarding what websites that we like, um, maybe other libraries that we think are working really well so that we can bring those to the designers and show them what, what we're working on so um, or what we're interested in. So that's, that's it for my report. Fantastic. Questions? Um, walking in, I talked to Nicole. She's going to take some pictures. Oh, okay. For the idea that we discussed as a possible way of approaching the annual report. Okay. I mean, sorry, long range plan. Okay. You know, is that on the agenda to talk about later or not? I didn't put it on the agenda because I don't really feel like it's done enough. Right. Okay, sure. If that's okay. Uh, but we can talk about pictures if you want. Okay. Um, I asked Megan, I said, um, if you divide the people who are going to read our long range plan into groups, those people that are going to read it from start to finish, those people that are going to glance at it, um, what would be the rough percentage breakdown? She said, well, there'll be a couple people that will read it from start <laughs> to finish. If that's the case, given what the goals are saying, it would be really neat on the front page just to say long range planning 22, 26, and then have a series maybe of nine pictures showing how the library is being used today by individuals, by groups, uh, 
for research, for fun, etc., and um, to really get the, the message out that this is not your conventional place. And um, so, uh, and also for the staff that would be willing to have their picture taken, it would be great to have each of these nine at least have in the group of pictures a staff present. Just yeah. to mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. I also think that if somebody sees somebody that they know or is familiar on the front, they're going to be more apt to read about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we post the long range plan on our website? We do. Yeah. I should have known. That's okay. The old one's still up because we're not quite done with this yeah, one, yeah. but yeah. So, so one further idea, and so it doesn't all fall on Megan's shoulders. What if each of us or as many of us that would like to do this say, well, here's an interesting, uh, exciting use of the library that fits with a long range plan. And if we could get pictures of it, then it may be, uh, as we set the goals, we might even put a little picture in and say, okay, this is, for example, here's a bunch of student ambassadors and just a, a couple lines or two so that people get the idea that they can come just use our meeting space Use Gale for research, use our electronic expensive licenses, et cetera. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. So does anybody have any ideas of, of use cases that, that are coming up in the next month or so where we can get some pictures? And if so, would you be willing just to see if you get a picture of it? Yeah. How can you go on scouts? Right. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. Um, we have meetings here. Yeah, that's smart. The meeting there, the yeah. safe meeting room. Um, and then the safe harbor one, I mean, since they're here tonight and the Nicole's already gonna. Yeah, Nicole's yeah, gonna take right. some pictures already. So right. She's gonna do that. Right. I can always put my children in front of a video game or something and, and do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Hi, you be hiding under the picture. Yeah, or some of like the, the, like, the kids play basketball. There. Oh, oh yeah, somebody okay. checking out a basketball would that's be good. That's a great one. That's one of my favorite yeah. 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 Since, you know. Mm -hmm. And what what group? I we should really ask our peers on the on the discussion. What groups do you think could really take advantage of the library that aren't now taking advantage of it? Like regular meeting groups. Well, um, or I, just constituencies general for yeah. constituencies. Okay. For example, we we're getting our house cleaned today, and uh, the two women are from Guatemala, mm. and um, I don't think they're documented, mm. but they speak a little bit of English. But there's so many things that they are wrestling with that we could help them with. I'm thinking of a list of all the public resources that are available for everything from housing to medical care and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that it might be interesting to have one picture of a couple of, um, right. and that also gets the inclusion concept yeah. and that we're not all white blogs. I, I, I would just imagine using that as an example. Yeah. While it's a really good example, I don't, think an undocumented person is going to want their picture plastered anywhere. Well, and I will also say too, that those folks tend to not come to get the library card because they're nervous okay. that they're going to take, be... take the word undocumented out of it and just people who are immigrants yeah. and don't have good language skills. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, just to get we pictures. Have a social worker? Yeah. There's a social worker hours here now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that would be, that seems to me like that's a resource. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like a natural fit. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people don't realize. Yeah. It's exactly. available. Yeah. Right. Are, are, Megan, are people making appointments for that or, or is it being, are they we're being? Having a, so we're having a little bit of a staff changeover there. Um, our social worker who worked for Elder Affairs, um, Stephanie Saunders, is now working for the health department. And so they're rehiring for Elder Affairs. And so that person will be here. Um, but I will say, you know, it wasn't used uh, a lot, but we definitely had, I'm going to say five or six people trickle in as, as we offered it. So um, 
I don't think it was unused. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, Brooke. I mean, I think that is something that people just don't know enough about. And if they did, maybe, you know, that would help. Yeah. yeah. Checking out something from the Library of Things. Oh, you said that fast. Mm -hmm. well, we yeah. that. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but you could do something else. It doesn't have to be the basketball. Yeah, the basketball is pretty awesome. Um, tech help is really fabulous. Tech help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, going back to the library thing, someone had posted something on Facebook. Like, wouldn't it be cool if there was, or no, maybe it was a town. Did you see this? So it's a town that has a library thing. They have like a leaf blower and a steam cleaner. Like yeah. things like that, which I mean, yeah, I think are kind of useful. They're very like, useful. Instead of asking your neighbor or something if you don't have one for the monitor. Yeah, that's true. Like, like some town, I think Brooklyn was one of them. They did like power tools. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. so yeah, I mean, the options for library things are endless. endless. It yeah. Is. yeah, we just got one of those little cubes um, that you put like a character on top and it reads a story or sings a song. So oh, it's yeah. for a little, little person. And they can, they have this cube and it has speakers and you can pick up, you know, the lion from Lion King and plop it on the top and it'll tell you a story about the lion from the Lion King. So I also loved and was so tempted at some point in the summer to borrow the, the inflatable movie screen and projector to like just have like outdoor movies or something would be fun one night. So I didn't know if people were even borrowing that and did it work? Oh yeah, that, so that's a very um, popular item and we've had to change the way it circulates because um, people wanted it for specific days, which makes total sense. So somebody's birthday or a football game or something like that. And so if they were on hold, they didn't necessarily know when they were gonna get it. Um, so <laughs> it was like a little bit of roulette for some folks. Um, so we've changed the way, or we're working on changing the way of how you can check that out and treat it a little bit more like a museum pass rather than like a item, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. To, to get it on a specific date. Yeah. I did want to say while we're on this topic, I had one of those little gratifying moments on Facebook recently. It was on, I think it was on the Buy Nothing Cohasset page and somebody was asking to borrow the large scale lawn games and somebody in the discussion said, yeah, check it out in the library. The library and has it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Good. Other thoughts? Good on strategic plan. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. Just, I just, if you think about what we're really trying to do, I was just struck by how unaware these two bright, capable women were of all the resources that could help them. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they're in Quincy, so. They're going to go to the Quincy Library. And see oh, and I, I bet the Quincy Library has some wonderful yeah. programs there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're right. They have a large immigrant population right. in Quincy. Yeah. Good. All right. Anything else? All right. Then that is front run for the bills. I'm out of practice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a big warrant this month. Um, I'm not sure why. Well, Baker and Taylor is finally able to ship the books again. That's we right. had this, they had a uh, ransomware uh, attack. Oh and so they couldn't send bills. They couldn't uh, take orders. You couldn't even fill out your report. Right. They were down for at least two weeks. At least. Two or three. Yeah. 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 It, was, it was very bad. So it was back up and running, but we had this sort of ran out of books on those and we have a glut I think coming in Kristen had boxes and boxes so uh, it's kind of a large uh, with more than nine thousand dollars to pay to Baker and Taylor this month um, other than that what did we get uh, well, we started up the T-Mobile um, the Wi-Fi hotspots and now we have to start paying for them it was a one year OCLN was paying for the hotspots so we've reduced down to I think six yes and so we had 10 originally, but six seems are, to be. Are they, and, and you didn't actually use all 10? I mean, I, I the one wasn't that great. No, well, no, we probably wouldn't use all 10. Although if uh, a storm was coming, people would come and get them. Because hmm. if, you were, if your power goes out, you oh. can use the, the hotspot as long as it's charged up. But yeah, you can use it to, um, you know, oh. to get your Wi-Fi. Oh, so um, there are a few people that 
kind of just use them as their personal Wi-Fi. <laughs> and they'll take one out and then put a hold on it in a different card, different person, or member of the family, and so that they continue to have same hotspots. Oh, that takes that's, some planning. It, it takes some planning, and that's what I mean. We're paying for them, so I, I feel like well, we might as well have them on work. Uh, be used. Um, other than that, um, Zoom New England, that's been really popular, so we're renewing that. Um, and uh, we did buy some furniture, so we've got a few bills for that. And we owe oh, the movie license. We've switched from the much cheaper movie license that we had that really didn't have a lot of options. And so we decided it was more important to um, at least have a, a movie license where we can show things that people want to see. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It's probably it's more than twice as expensive. It's five hundred and fifty dollars, which is movie picture not an incredible amount of money for a year. Oh, and um, right now you can uh, normally you can't, but they're, they're still in COVID protocols. You can use the um, the license to show movies outside. I know my TV mm. had done that. It was pretty popular. So. I think Allison was thinking about maybe doing something or maybe doing something with Sharon and using the tent before it goes down. So anyway, that's what why we decided to switch up. And that's everything I have. If anybody has any questions, do that. Um, I just want to mention the furniture pieces are extra shelving in the teen room. Yes. So just so she could do some more, yeah. they're small, but she wanted to do some more displays. So they're very much like the little Amazon 30 yeah, she $40 things. Yeah, yeah. Megan, um, so they Megan, like I, big purchases. Megan, I just want to ask yeah. quickly. I think you had talked about getting a larger desk for the teen room, but when I was in there meeting the new teen librarian, she still had the little desk. Is that okay or is that still something in the works? Um, yeah, so she actually requested a small desk um, because she didn't want to take up, because it's just a small room, <laughs> she didn't want to take up a lot of space with herself um so and it's also one of the desks that stands up as well um because that was something that was going to work best for her um so so that's all set and i don't think the small desk was it wasn't very expensive at all of course because it was small so um yeah Good. and then just finally so the um display table that we talked about last time is that one of the pieces that is on the warrant and or did it come in it's it's here um Bronwyn works some magic. <laughs> <laughs> I saved the library $130 on that furniture because I thought that we, they hadn't given us a discount. So I called them and then they were like, oh, fine, we'll give you, because the, the shipping was very expensive. Uh, it was over $300. And so the whole shelving unit itself was only $600. So I thought oh. something wasn't right. And they ended up giving us a pretty good discount. So oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> we haven't put it together yet. Maybe tomorrow. That yeah. might be the plan. But it is here and it's on the warrant. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. She's offering a course at the library, <laughs> wheeling and dealing That's with right. that. <laughs> It's all about saving money. That's right. That's right. That's right. My job. father would be proud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are any questions or other discussion on the bills? No, I'll, I'll move the bills. All right, I'll, I'll second. Okay, uh, we have to do a roll call for, for uh, bills. So, Mary Lou Lawrence, yeah. uh, Steve Brown, yes, for Jewel, yes. I don't know why I keep stumbling on Jewel, it's <laughs> such a charming name. Um, Sarah Pease, yes, um, uh, Elaine Breslov, hi. May Rizzi. Yes. Alex Viteri. Hi. Oh, Alex, are you healthy? It sounded kind of throaty. I think I, I think that was just uh, something that got caught in my throat. I'm, uh, you're, it did sound kind of weird, but thanks for noticing. <laughs> 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 Carolyn votes aye. Catherine Harvey votes aye. So the, the bills, uh, the warrant passes for, for October. Thank you, Bronwyn. We'll pass it around and um, sign the bills. Um, okay, so then that brings it to me, my report. I really don't have, I would say, a, especially uh, a chair report. I, 
feel like really most of the things I touched this month were either CLT or friends. So I'm gonna just sort of defer and then we can get into that under the other umbrellas. Um, so that would bring us to CLT is next, right? Is that right? Yes. I just switched my screen off the agenda. Um, Carolyn, do you wanna say anything on CLT? No, she's still here. She's mute. I think she might be muted. Maybe she got stopped by the Carolyn. Up there. Uh, sorry. Uh, you go ahead, Catherine. Okay. Um, so just to say, so we um, have had a couple of meetings of the development, or like I guess only one meeting of the development committee, and then we're going to have another one uh, tomorrow. Um, this sort of in the early stages of talking about the um, the outdoor space and what our needs might be um, for fundraising um, in some kind of capital campaign or uh, what we might undertake to raise some funds for that and sort of assessing uh, how much that might be and um, you know how we might go about that uh, given the funding sources that we anticipate we may have for that project and then you know what the shortfall would be and how to how to go about making that up. Um, but the CLT as a, as the full board has not met since our last trustees meeting so it was really just the development um, committee meeting which consists of myself and Carolyn and um, uh, Jen Onyebene and Megan I guess yeah <laughs> you were there so and you're on the committee. Hard win. And Barb Whiff. And Barb Whiff. Right, of course. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that that's, we're sort of in the assessment period. You think, would you agree, Carolyn? Yes. So if anyone has any good idea here, we, we have, what we talked about needing to do is coming up with a plan for fundraising um, by targeting both um, people who, might feel very generous toward the library and have the means to do so, and also making sure that um, you know people who who don't have those same means feel like a, they're a part of it and can um, you know contribute and feel appreciated. So, um, and we were trying to come up with you know ways of recognizing large donors and, and that sort of thing. So if people have ideas, please, you know, shoot an email to Catherine or me or something and, and let us know. We we are planning to meet at 1030 tomorrow morning. So if you have ideas before then, that would be fabulous. Um, I should also say, and I should have said this part of my direct support, but um, Carolyn and I met with the CPC as kind of our first round um, and our project was uh, warmly uh, Warmly received. Received. Thank you. Um, so say reject. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Warmly rejected. Warmly rejected. Warmly rejected. Warmly rejected. Yeah. Megan, go rejected. back to the library. Um, so we've been invited back on the 24th um, to give more of a formal presentation, and we'll be asking them for 125, um, which is a third of our project. So fingers crossed, but we're on a good path. The one, uh, just to double back, because I one thing I should have said in the chair's report, we did also have another meeting with Chris McFarland on the Outdoor Space Committee, and um, which was fantastic. And for the most part, he was giving us, you know, a new set of renderings, which we all loved. Um, the only development there, I would say, is that we are contemplating perhaps moving the pergola so that it'd be right against the building rather than around this sort of, uh, you know, rounded area that would overlook the amphitheater seating, um, which I think is going to, I think we all sort of understood that that was going to be not only a sturdier structure, but probably more functional in the long run. Mm -hmm. And so that was really sort of the only development there, mm -hmm. unless, you know, I'm missing anything. That's good. Um, um, he's, been, he's been fantastic and so generous with his time um, and so receptive to any, um, comments or you know questions concerns and he has accommodated i i want to say pretty much everything not and not just from the trustees that were at those meetings but also very interested in what the staff asking megan to go to the staff and ask for feedback from the staff as well as to how they envision utilizing the space so 
Um, it, I, I can't say enough about him. I, I'm just so grateful and we're really lucky. Yeah, I agree completely. He's he's been incredible, and the the drawings have been fantastic. And yeah, he made the whole thing I think feel very accessible and achievable. And you know, it's I think it's been it's been great working with him for sure. How much money are we trying to raise? Um, it's not entirely clear yet. You know, that's why I would say we're sort of in the assessment phase, but. Um, I think that we think it's going to be around 200, right? Yeah. Or a little more. Maybe a little more. I mean, if we get what we are anticipating from CPC and. Um, oh, I'm sorry. You, you're talking, he, Alex, you were asking what share? What would, how much we would be looking to raise. Okay, the total. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, excluding other funding, the, you know, other, from the trust. yes, other yeah. little pockets of cash that we have that we would de be devoting, you know, so less anything that we are already accounting for. So, so we're looking for so donors. Project, so, we're so, guessing it's going to be 350 to 375. Right. And, Sorry, and so, no, no, I guess the question is, so how many people like, are we talking about this is Cohasset and 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 this is people that don't run in my in my circles? But if how many like do we have people that are that are dropping you know twenty five fifty thousand dollars to the library uh, for charitable reasons, or are we talking about smaller donations like five thousand or twenty five hundred, like the more approachable numbers? What are, what are we talking about here? I think that kind of remains to be seen. I think it would be unlikely that we would get. Uh, very many in the twenty-five to fifty thousand dollar range. I wouldn't say that it was necessarily unthinkable that somebody might do that, but I would say that it's unlikely that we would get more than you know, maybe a couple. I mean, I, I, I that's a guess. I mean, <laughs> let me just say that's a guess. So, if I, I guess it's, I, for me, it was like I was trying to understand like how if we're trying to get. It, sorry, because I really, my brain doesn't work in any way, but, but like small, like compartmentalized things. Like, are we trying to, if, you know, if we get, you know, two dozen $2,500 donations, you know, uh, a, a series of smaller units, and then we get two that are in the large, you know, tens of thousands, is that like, is that what the makeup of this looks like? I'm just trying to understand, like, like understand what this, what are we trying to incentivize people to do and what will it take to motivate them to, to get there? I, I don't, I'm, I can't, I just, I don't understand how what necessarily what we, what we can do to motivate people unless I kind of understand what we're trying to, what does success look like? So I know the no total number, but how does that, how do we, how does that build, how does that ladder up? Well, I think that's sort of what the discussion that we're having in, in the CLT committee meeting. Um, and I, I, I have this idea that we're thinking maybe we'll have a small group sort of in the, maybe in the $10,000 range. And then, you know, and maybe we'll get an outlier that gives a large gift. And then I think we really, I mean, I feel strongly that we want to open it up to anyone who wants to participate at any level that they can or would like to, because we want to always, you know, have owner everyone have the ability to participate and have ownership over this project because it's a it's a public project and it's for for the benefit of everyone at the same time anybody who wants to participate at a, at a i mean we're not going to sneeze at anybody so um you know that's the discussion i think you, you sort of summed up what the, what the conversation that we're that we're having so we could conceivably see bricks with our names on them, if that's if that's like well, what that the... that is something we we've, we've discussed. I think we've decided that that something in the spirit of that idea is welcome, but perhaps not that exact idea, only because bricks require a lot of uh, maintenance on the order of weeding and keeping tidy, <laughs> and um, that okay. ends up being you know. A whole other expense and a draw on facilities, and that could possibly be, you know, used in a in a better way, and also might, you know, detract from the majesty of this project. <laughs> this project. Well, we've also, Understood. We've also elected to do a poured concrete uh, patio finish and stage finish, so you know, um, it's less expensive, much less expensive than doing a brick walkway. Um, and much easier to maintain. So, 
Have you um, talked about naming rights if somebody wanted to pick up the whole thing? I mean, it came up. I, I would say we haven't had a robust discussion around it, Thank but you, it, Mary. it has certainly <laughs> come up. That's for Billy. <laughs> so yeah it, it has come up but um it, nobody did any yeah i mean it's so. early it days i would say point, yeah but yeah. it was part of our conversation that that would be probably the most ideal way to mm -hmm. get there quickly because mm -hmm. we do want to get this started um so there was a little conversation about it but i also agree with um catherine that you know every dollar counts so we don't want to leave absolutely. people out uh, absolutely yeah. so but know, it is ideally. something that that lends itself well to mm -hmm. a little stone with somebody's name on it mm -hmm. yeah. I, and i'm kind of thinking thinking that you know any large donation or gift you know not always sometimes people are looking for a naming to be associated with that and sometimes people really are just so generous they, they they're not looking for that but I really love what you said, Catherine, and what you've just um, confirmed, Mary Lou, is that, you know, how you can help. You know, this is really a community project and we really, nothing is too small and nothing is too big. And so everyone, even with the small donations should be made to feel that they are the bricks that are allowing this process to move ahead because without everyone kind of chipping in, it you know, it wouldn't necessarily happen, or we can do nicer things if everybody does do what, you know, what they can. And so sometimes I feel like these projects come off as elitist in terms of opportunities for naming things. And yet I feel that part of what we are, one of our first goals or what we at the back in square one was to say accessibility and making everyone feel included and feeling ownership with this project. So I, I love that you're paying attention to, you know, the quote unquote smaller donations and ways people can creatively feel like, wow, I've helped to make this happen. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, it was a part of the discussion to have some kind of event and receive, you know, $50, $100 a person. Um, the con or is that too, too heavy of a... I mean, it was not part of the conversation, but I mean, certainly it's, that's an idea that is, something we should think about and explore, you know, some kind of a fundraising event, I think would be would be a lot of fun. I mean, if you could do it outdoors, but of course the, the days are waning. Yeah, um, in spring. And it's, yeah. It's well, I mean, of course we're hoping to be underway by then. So yes. <laughs> time is short, but you know, um, but no, it, it, that's, I mean, that we should definitely bring that into the discussion because that does give people, again, the accessibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Steve, did you have something you want well, to I was just going to uh, reinforce what Elaine said and wondering if there were a way to let children give a small amount, you know, a dollar, whatever their uh, allowance is. So you could have maybe a support or for have children. them participate somehow. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. plant the bushes or something, you know, have like a family, yeah. you know, event where everybody can help plant. Our vegetation yeah that'd be nice for some of it Balls. The manage yeah, yeah the, 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 the um former uh principal at deer hill used to do that she used to have a, a day every every fall when a bunch of kids would stay after school and we'd all play bulbs together it was really nice oh. yeah that's great yeah. Yeah. yeah i like that a lot yeah it's a nice way to invest the younger generation yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know 20 that, years they're like that's the shroud <laughs> yeah. right yeah. or that could be a nice acknowledgement too if people are giving sort of at that 25 or 50 dollar mm -hmm. level to you know give a bulb to come back to an event to plant them it's like an afterwards you know again mm -hmm. to like give them some sense of ownership and pride yeah. in the project mm -hmm. um so all good ideas yeah. i mean i would say definitely um Keep thinking that way and let us know as your ideas come rolling in. Everything, every idea is welcome. Yeah, I love that idea of planting something. Yeah, yeah, that could be great. Um, oh, we may have lost Carolyn, or maybe she just muted. Um, I did just mute. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
All right. So I think unless Carolyn, you had anything else to add to CLT. Nope. Thank you. Sure. Um, okay. So that brings us to the friends and where we stand with the friends is that they had their meeting on Thursday morning um, and settled on a budget for their annual grant to the library. Um, it was a pretty robust discussion because as we are all very much aware, with costs increasing on pretty much everything in order to provide level services um, in the programming realm, um, it was it, it was a lot more. So it was it was a much bigger ask than the friends are accustomed to, and it, it was inevitably going to represent a shortfall from the appeal if we compare it by what the appeal brought in last year. So that was sort of a lengthy discussion because in order to keep the level services, the shortfall was going to be seven or eight thousand dollars. Um, yes, it was they shorted it. The budget five, just about. So yeah, and then with a little bit of extra, right? That would make sense. Right. So um, I think the appeal came in in the twenty-eight thousand dollar range. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was, a, it, like I said, it was a robust discussion because there is some money in the coffers, but um, where this is an annual grant, you know, there had to be a lot of consideration about what is sustainable and whether or not and how the friends would like to expand the scope of their fundraising um, to yield more to, um, to keep providing the programming services. So the number that they arrived on was $30,000 for the budget to come into the library for programming primarily. Um, and there was also discussion about, although not lengthy, about the friends participating in making a grant, a separate grant towards the outdoor space. Of course, it's sort of elusive at the moment with them already struggling with a shortfall. Um, so that's all in discussion, I would say. Um, and there are some great ideas um, around expanding the scope of the fundraising, the friends fundraising. Um, and I think that, uh, and there's some, some new members on the board at the friends um, who I think have a lot, ton of energy for this and some really good ideas. And so, I do think that there are some change to come um, in those areas. Um, of course, one of the things that has been incredibly beneficial is the book bins. And um, I mean, while we're still keeping up the, the book sale in the community room, the book bins have dramatically increased what the friends are bringing in for, um, I think it was $1,200 for the last quarter, mm -hmm. whereas we were getting like, you know, 150 a month. So, oh you know, before, so wow. yeah, so yeah. It, it's, a, it's a big increase. I mean, you know, maybe getting a third book bin somewhere in town is, is another possibility because that has been incredibly successful, but other, other things too, some other ideas too. Um, and also, again, that same conversation that we keep having you know, making sure that people understand what the friends is, what their role is, and the fact that they are supplying all the programming at the library and trying to expand the reach um, of the friends um, with around town so that people understand that if you're using the programming at the library and you're enjoying it, or if there's programming that you would like to see that you're not seeing, a great way to um, make it happen is to contribute and to make sure that you know who to contribute. Too. Um, so, you know, of course, we are going to potentially think about, like we have before, you know, cannibalizing on um, fundraising efforts and making sure that the friends are getting the funding that they need to keep the programming services robust um, while all at the same time, you know, not generating any fatigue that might um, erode our opportunity to keep the fundraising going for the for the outdoor space. So all of those things are are afoot. Um, and I think in a good place and I think moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, and so one thing that I wanted to mention 
about this is that I know that, well, I guess I want to ask the question. Um, historically, the trustees have voted on approving the grant coming in from the friends. And that mechanism I've always found a little bit puzzling. And so I, I want to put it to members of the board who have been on the board a little bit longer than some of us to maybe clear that up a little bit. Cause I, I honestly don't have a full understanding of why that has been the case historically. So I wondered, to me, it seems like a custom and I would say clearly not a requirement. Um, and as far as, um, let's call it inter-entity uh, relationships, I, the concept eludes me. So, Catherine? I, yes. So the, the, it's not that we accept the grant. It's what's supposed to happen is we're supposed to approve the programming choices and then vote to ask the friends mm -hmm. to please fund them. That, that's the, the mechanism that, that historically has taken place. Yes, I, would, I agree with that. Okay. Because that would mean that the trustees have, you know, power okay. over the programming. Well, the program is, the friends don't offer up the program. I see, okay. So, I mean- The friends still offer it, but the trustees- No, so they don't. So actually, the programming comes from the librarians, really. Yeah, well, that's so the I would thing. argue I think that that that's, that's changed. Operations. Yes. And that's not yeah. necessarily under the trustee's umbrella. It's daily operations. And, and a lot has changed just in the last few years about how this process works, because it also used to be that the director would come to the friends and describe all that, it, well, we're coming to the friends for each program and getting right. approval for each grant you know, in, in like a couple hundred dollars at a time for each program. Mm -hmm. And so that process became dramatically streamlined. And then also the decision to basically budget the programming on a departmental basis. Right. And so that whole process has evolved a lot just in the last two to three years. So, I mean, I think, you know, where does that leave us operate as far as the trustees involvement, I think that we've sort of given discretion to the department heads and to the librarians for um, choosing the programming. We have not been exercising any, I mean, for lack of a better word, control or decision-making power over the programming in recent years. And so query whether this still makes sense. Well, ultimately I guess though, it all comes back to the trustees. Approving the budget too. Yeah, that's actually it's just a budget approval. I mean, the except that it's the not the trustees' budget; it's the friends' budget because yeah. the friends is a private organization. But so, in other words, that the 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 friends is and, and and this is also on my mind because the friends have also just recently had hired lawyers and had a, a comprehensive rewriting of their bylaws and everything is all cleaned up now. And I think part of this discussion that we've had with the strategic plan and part of the discussion that we have had about confusion among patrons about what who is who and what we do um, I think makes clear that the Friends is a private organization that engages in fundraising activities and then makes a grant to the library, which is a public institution. And that we as the trustees are elected officials, a representative body who have stewardship over the library. But I don't think that the programming, I mean, that's a gift from a private organization that comes to the library. So I, I mean, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it, but I don't really understand. I mean, it, it, to me, it doesn't seem to be a requirement and it doesn't seem to have any specific legal utility to us as a, so, as a representative so, body. But if we have stewardship of the library, if the trustees have stewardship of the library, 
isn't it their responsibility to acknowledge, approve every single thing that happens? I don't know about every single thing that happens. I mean, I think that we well, make not every single, but but all the different parts, CLT, the friends, everything. Well, I would make the same argument for CLT. They're also a private organization. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. have they are, they're running the endowment, but the library is a public institution. So the CLT gives a gift to the library, and um, I can and the trustees I, accept the gift. The, could the could accept the gift and the trustees could the role of the trust might be how do we want that is being made but i don't think that there's any need for us to sort of you know approve that gift that's being i mean they're they're making the gift they they their board mm -hmm. decided how much they were going to give the library and we're receiving that gift if we want to have discussion and make sure that it's being spent in the best interest of the library in our role as representatives of the patrons and the voters who elected us to be on the board of trustees, that's one thing. But you know, I don't see how a stamp of approval, we don't really have any ownership over what the endowment does, just like we don't have any ownership over what the friends does, because they're two separate private private organizations. So Catherine, I think I think what you just said was the is is exactly what is 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 correct, right? It's the connective tissue. It's saying we are accepting this gift, and we making sure that it's being utilized. The funds are going to be being utilized properly against the strategic plan that we are involved in, right? So I, 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 that's that's my my read of it, and that's why we just. I, I'm sorry, Alex. Just one second. I just wanted to hear what Sarah had to say. Having yeah, I, I was just saying that, that no, but I mean. It has always been that even though um, that the friends is the fundraising element of the library, because as we're not allowed to be fundraisers, right? Like that's part of our thing. So exactly, the fundraising for us, right? But they are in kind of a subsidiary position. I mean, they get to use the name of the Paul Pratt Library, and I think I mean I would just be has, has so they just don't want it to be that we acknowledge it by saying thank you for the gift or I don't understand what the problem is. No, I just don't think that there's any utility in our voting to approve. So, so in other words, so my question was, why are we voting to approve what the, what the friends are granting to the, to the library? And then, and the answer was, well, we're not, we're voting to um, approve what historically or customarily we were voting to approve the programming budget and then you know in conjunction with approving the programming budget we were then asking the friends to supply the, the funds but now we don't we don't approve we don't do the budget in that way anymore oh we, yeah we never really we never really did we never we never did but i think that the problem and I hesitate to speak for everyone, but I think the thing is that the trustees are the overseeing and that we really do need the final kind of level to be above the friends because, I mean, they're using our name. I mean, so in a way they are working for the library by using the name. I mean, this group of people on their own couldn't be raising the money without saying this money is for the Baltimore Library, if you understand that. Uh, well, I do, but I mean, they, so the, they're the friends of the Coasset Library. They don't, yeah. they don't use the name Paul Pratt. Well, okay. But, um, but I, I mean, I, I guess I don't see it that way because, I mean, so in their, their mission and their bylaws are written to ensure that they are fun, that they raise funds to the benefit of the library. That's true, but I don't understand why we as trustees have any influence over them unless they were to be going out and doing something that we thought reflected poorly on the library no but i don't think i don't think we do i don't think we've ever said no we're not taking the money but i do think that we want the idea that we would still have some form of, of control of control and and res and responsibility because we're elected officials that True, but we don't have that's I, I think what I'm saying is that I think that that control is an illusion because they're ultimately a private organization. Catherine, maybe it would help maybe it would help if you just why don't you suggest 
what you would like to see happen that you think is different from what it is now? What specifically would you like to have? Just that the friends would say, okay, we're gonna give uh, $30,000 today, uh, this year. Well, I, I don't think that I've thought about it in those terms so much. I just, I, I'm asking the question because I just, I don't understand this this mechanism and it I have always found it puzzling. But if it, yeah. if, it's always, it's, and it's come up. It's come, it's come up in the past and I remember Sheila Evans sitting there and but saying, absolutely not. Well, I just think, yeah. yeah. That this that is, is the mind. way also. it is. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and that was the end of it. I have a question, Elaine here. I have a question I since I have not, I, my historical memory, it doesn't go as deep. But if the issue is having, we, we accept gifts from, you know, let's say somebody passes and they love the library and they give a gift. We don't question necessarily. And that person says, I, I want books about roses and only books about roses. And we don't as trustees question that gift. So if this donation from the, from the friends is in fact a donation, a gift, we, we would be foolish not to accept it. But what we want not control over, but what we want um, accountability of is how that money is spent and how we get accountability about how that money is spent and utilized and where it goes is by having our director report to us what the programming is. And we give deference to that director because that is an operational thing that, that, that you know, we as trustees may, may say, oh, this might be a great idea for programming, or we've heard from some constituents and patrons that the, this is missing at our library. That's feedback. But mm -hmm. we entrust the director and the staff to come up with innovative programming of which I might say they have surpassed expectations in the last few years. Um, and so accepting this gift doesn't mean that we are, you know, our hands are clean of any responsibility because we, that we will still be looking toward the director to report to us on how those funds are being proposed to be spent. So I understand that, that um, tradition or culturally how things may have been done, but I think Maybe it depends on the relationship the trustees have had with the director. Maybe, it, you know, times are a little bit different. And so um, I think there's no question the a director and staffing have to be accountable to trustees and we have to have our finger on the pulse. We're not just saying, okay, just do whatever you want. But that's, you know, we're not saying that. We're saying we still want to and expect you to report to us as to how you're proposing to ask for grants and, and monies and how you're proposing to spend them. Um, but we're not gonna, our, our job isn't to micromanage how those funds are being spent. And, our, and again, our job isn't to say, we do not want to accept this gift or donation, even if it's for books that are only about roses, because why would we do that? So do we feel then that we want to still have a vote and the vote is to direct, do, do we want it to be, I, so this is where I, I sort of go astray, but do we, do we want to have a vote about the disposition of the grant specifically that we are directing the director to dedicate the grant from the front friends to programming. Um, the only the issue there is that it sometimes is slightly broader than that because there are sometimes like in like the story walk or like there's sometimes some physical items that are not squarely within programming. So, you know, that's where it gets a little bit sticky. So I guess that's my question. Do we want to still be voting on this? And if we are still voting on it, how do we want to do it? I, I just thought of another, another thing. Um, one of the things that I know had always considered the trustees is when the friend's letter goes out, that they do want to have a look at it before it goes out. Does everyone mm -hmm. agree with that? Mm -hmm. Correct. Because 
this is the way the library is presenting itself to the town. I mean, that's the one thing that goes out to everyone. I, I don't think that is for the trustees, to be honest. I don't. I mean, I understand the impulse. I, I, I mean, totally it do. It never gets changed or anything, but. I know. And I, I understand the impulse. I really honestly do. And I think it's, it's completely understandable. And I think if that uh, should be open to discussion about whether that's something that needs to still happen. I mean, I know historically that is what has happened. Yeah. Um, no, and I'm mean, just saying it because I mean, the one thing that the library really has is its, is its name and we are the trustees of the library's name. So as custodians of the image of the library. Image of the library. Mm -hmm. And Our I'm not brand. saying that, I don't think we have ever gone I mean, I can't remember ever changing the letter, but I think it is an important thing to see the letter before it goes out. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a wonderful group that has done these wonderful things, but I think it's something we should still have a little bit of control over. If there is a trustee liaison on the front, though, I don't know. Well, my humble opinion is that I don't know if the liaison needs to look at it and then have it go to the board and have it approved from there as well. It just, it's- It used to go to the whole board. Yeah. It used to, it doesn't anymore, but that's the way it was set up. It, it, there have been issues with how the letter had been crafted in the past and that, and so it started that way. Um, and then it got down to just the chair reading it and giving the okay. Um, and. Yeah, you know, I think it's gotten to where it's kind of nothing anymore. But. What you're saying, though, I think, is that the friends feel. Well, I don't want to attribute to anyone other than than me. Okay. I mean, I, I would say that this is my analysis. Um, so I, I wouldn't attribute it to the friends generally. I would okay. say having served on both boards for sure. a, a lengthy period of time and uh, also, sort of my, you know, political scientist legal hat on. I, I, I have found the concept elusive. That so I'm, I'm asking the question. Okay. But just to break it down, make it really simple. Yeah. If uh, trustees write a letter and say we've raised thirty thousand dollars, the friends, mm -hmm. the friends, and we would like that to be used for our letter said we were going to use this to support programming. Mm -hmm. So that would be it. Here's, and we would just say thank you very much. And I mean, I, I suppose, I guess the question is, um, do we need to have a vote to direct that the grant is used for specific purposes? Do we, or do we want a, do we feel that we need a vote to direct that the grant should be used primarily for programming in the discretion of the director and library staff. Do we want, do we feel that we don't need to do a vote anymore? Um, and then after we settle that question, we'll get to the question of do we want to still be seeing the appeal letter before it goes out? Just for discussion's sake, the simplest thing seems to be to say, here's the letter, please help support the letter. We've got a wonderful staff, they will decide precisely how to use it, um, but it's just people that contribute are contributing for the health and well-being of the library and in, in the belief that the director and staff will, will do it wisely. So I have, I have another uh, question. So do, do the friends have any opinion as to how the money is used anyway? I mean, do they ever say we only want this used for programming or we only want to use this for, you know, museum passes or we, you know, I mean, they, they, it doesn't seem to me that they really, I mean, you know, how we direct the funding or how we phrase this, if we have a vote, and we, say we, we, we would like to see the majority of the funding go toward programming with the capability to be flexible should some some should some other future need arise, um, uh, you know. Well, that's so, the director. Uh, so the so the way that the the monies work is they don't just 
they don't hand us thirty thousand dollars that goes in the library coffers. It stays in the friends' coffers, and we essentially request funding by presenting them an invoice, pretty much. Um, hmm. And and so they pay the invoice and send their treasurer um, pays the invoice and sends it off. So the model that we have broken away from, which was the previous model, was not only did the the staff ask for approval for a program from the board of trustees, but they would also have to go to the friends and have the same um, program uh, approved so that the friends would fund it because they you know so since they're a private 501c3 they at the end of the day can decide what invoices get paid and what don't we can't demand that they they pay for certain things because they're separate from us um so um we've broken away from that model thank goodness because it slowed mm -hmm. operations and um it wasn't it wasn't good for the library or our community um, so I think we're kind of now in limbo trying to figure out how to move forward in operating where, you know, the friends really are the stewards of their funds. And so they put out a letter that says it's for programming and for museum passes for the library. They really can't use it for anything else uh, because they've fundraised under a certain pretense. Um, so because it never goes into our account, I would say that we don't, well, uh, we don't have final say on how it's used because it never goes into our accounts. Uh, well, I, I'm also kind of interested that the friends hire their own lawyer to change the 501c3. No, that's they not, no, that's no, not accurate. That. No, they, no, they needed, the, the bylaws had to be rewritten. Okay. They were, horrendously outdated. I mean, I, they had been originally written in 1968, and I don't think they had been touched since yeah. the early no, 80s. No, I just wondered. I yeah, so that. so the, the, we started the process probably three or four years ago, yeah. looking at them, trying to update them, and the fact is that the law had changed. We were in arrears paying um, fees to the, to the state, and so that had to be sorted out. And so while the patient was on the table, they had professionally written bylaws. Okay, no, no, I just wondered because, um, but I do kind of think if that the friends are a subsidiary to the trustees, I honestly believe that mm -hmm. as are, as is the trust, mm -hmm. they both are. Mm -hmm. And that we all, even with the trust, they give us the money, but we vote to accept it. And I just think, I don't think it's a lot to ask to have, a, just look at the letter. It has our name on it. It is the one fundraising thing that goes out from everyone. And I, to vote that we accept the money, we don't, we don't quibble on what it's spent on anything. I mean, right. otherwise you have these, these free floating organizations in the library. I mean, every, they, I mean, but they are. They but are, they should be. They, but I mean, it, everything falls under the trustees. But we can't fundraise. So no, we're not no, allowed to fundraise. That's can't. why the trustees, that's why the, the trustees set, set up the friends. But you have to operate under the, the under a, a, a direction, right? Under a plan. There's a brand, right? It's like if, if this were a, if this were a company, you'd be saying, "I've got a this is these are my objectives for the year that the board of trustees or the board of directors." would be doing and you and if regardless of where the money comes from you still have to kind of meet those goals and so i agree that 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 i would not although i would never use the terminology that's a subsidiary of 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 the of the of the library i do think that it is it, it is under it's a guidance of the board of direct of the board of trustees that is driving the strategic plan which we are just which we're working on right now and if it if for some reason those dollars are being earmarked for something that don't ladder up to the strategic plan, they shouldn't be approved. I mean, I, like, I, it, that's how, I mean, I don't know how, uh, am I not getting it? Because I feel like I agree that we shouldn't be approving the dollars. The dollars are great. Thanks. You know, thank you for the dollars. But at the end of the day, we have to be approving how the dollars are used. And it's our brand, right? I mean, it's our, what we're trying to do is we're trying to reposition moving away from it being about books. It's about community. I mean, that, I, I mean, sorry if I'm, if I sound like I'm getting frustrated, but I feel like the last three months we've been talking about what this, what we want the library to be. 
and all of a sudden we would think it's okay for some uh, for a rant, for another organization to put out a letter and tell us tell the community what we're about. So no, well, I don't think so I, I don't think that's not a letter. No, no, no. So that so the letter is their annual appeal appeal letter, and it is that's that is their whole fundraising budget for the year, basically. So they send out the letter saying, please give to the friends of the library. You know, here's a sample of some of the programs that we've run this year, and we pay for all the programming, just so you know. So please give. That's basically the gist of the letter, although it's lengthy. Um, so it, I wouldn't say. You know, it, it, I would say that they only sort of, you know, rep to their own uh, activities, which is providing grants to the library for the programming. So, so I think that brings us back to the question. So do we want to be then, uh, do we want to have some kind of a vote that acknowledges that the grant is earmarked for programming? Again, it doesn't come in as a single grant. Now, right. from the way Megan has described it, it's really coming in piecemeal by, it's more of an in-kind really, because if you're submitting the invoice and they're paying the, the vendors directly, it's really more of an in-kind. It doesn't even come to the library. Well, why wouldn't the trustees just acknowledge all of that as it comes in, just as we acknowledge well, CLT? So the trustees need to know what everybody is doing yeah. So, yeah. And whatever goes out to the to the public. I mean, the friends have never done this, and CLT has never done this. But there's nothing right now. If if you've got these free floating organizations, there's nothing to stop them from sending all kinds of letters out. They would never do it. But. Right. Right. Well, well, and we have we do have representatives on both. I'm a little stumped. So because the CLT is a little bit different in the sense that they give us the money and it goes into our account. Right, and the friends, it works differently. So it works differently. I don't know if that means we treat them, our uh, approvals differently, same. but. I mean, the thing is too, and the more we discuss it, the more it's going to also make it more complex on the, on the CLT side because the CLT grant goes in more different places than the friends well, funds. Mm, no, I mean, I, I, I mean, it, most of it goes to materials it, the way it is now, but it, it all goes to the CLT gift account, and the gift account then is in the warrant every, you know, every month. Right, we know if, it, if materials are purchased. So, so we are approving with our warrant anything that's spent out of the gift account from the CLT. Right. Okay. Okay. Good point. Um. All right. So. It sounds. And I think I think we do the same thing with. But we get a, a report on deposits to, to the gift account, and I think the friends' monies, Ron would correct me if I'm wrong, go to a gift account, and then the purchase of the museum pass or the payment of the program or whatever comes out of that gift account and shows up on our warrant. So they. Yes. I give them a total at the end of the year, the calendar year, of what we spent on museum passes. And Barbara gives me a check for that amount. And so we pay out of the gift account all year because there's a surplus balance in this gift account, pay the museum passes out of that account, and then it's reimbursed at the end of the year. So it is on the warrant. In fact, there was one, the Zoo New England, that came out of the gift account. Mm -hmm. And I'll put that on the list at the end of the year and get a, get a reimbursement. So okay. those two items sound like they're treated a little bit differently than what Megan was describing earlier, which is okay. we have Mama Steph coming, we have to pay her, we go to the friends, we submit the, the invoice, and then the friends pay the invoice. Yes, all the programming that we have, any, any performers, well, now we do, Mama Steph will do a monthly bill. We used to pay every week when she came. Now we do it monthly. And I give it to Barbara. Barbara writes a check and um, sends it to Mama Steph. If it's someone that's coming here, she'll write me a check and I keep it in my safe. And then the day of the program, it's handed to the person. So we don't do any... There's no nothing on the warrant so, particularly or anything. We don't really have any control of that money other than holding the check. Is it accurate then to say that anything that's not being paid directly by the friends is flowing through the gift account? 
can be thing that's not paid directly. Um, so like the museum yes. passes. Yeah, they pay then, for they pay for also um, Oriental trading, all the crafts. Okay. So I order the crafts and then get the invoice and Barbara pays it direct pays that bill and Amazon. Mm -hmm. Some of these are some Amazon things. But museum passes are the only thing that we really like pay for out of our accounts. Yeah. And then they reimburse. And then they reimburse. Yeah. I think that's the only thing. But we're I capturing can. those items in the warrant. Yes. Those are the museum passes. Right, so, but my yeah, point okay. is like that. Other than that, the situation in which the friends pays an invoice direct or pays a vendor directly, mm -hmm. anything else is coming through the warrant that we're seeing and improving every month anyway. Yeah. yeah. So we, we, you know, then that does give us, you know, some measure of, of control or you know at that at that level of of seeing all those expenses and yeah. you know where it came yeah. from as yeah. far as the accounting goes. And sometimes if I, we've asked for say thirty thousand dollars, sometimes we don't spend that amount. Things get canceled, mm -hmm. you know, for whatever reason, and the funds just keep that those funds. It's different than the endowment. They say we're going to give you this much money. It goes into our SoftRight account account, and then if we don't spend it in that whole year, it carries over the next year. Mm -hmm. We still have it. Mm -hmm. With the friends, it's a little bit it's different. different. It, it stays with the friends. So. Right. Also, um, if you look at the um, COT, when it, the, the papers that were written when it was set up, mm -hmm. they are all they are responsible to ultimately always to the trustees, and that that's very clear mm -hmm. in their by I think they call them bylaws. Um, Carolyn, what do they call that? Uh, I could I. Couldn't really hear what you were saying. Sorry, Brandon. Just can you repeat it, please? The the um, papers that um, the founding papers for the CLT that were written back when CLT was founded in the early nineties. Yeah. Well, early two thousand. The early two thousand. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and and they state very clearly that CLT is set up always and and that they would always answer to the trustees yeah yeah and i you know it's hard to make also to make a vote for this when we don't really have the papers in front of us it's kind of hearsay like but i'm sure that the actual papers that set up the friends has something in there about about it i don't think it does about the trustees yeah, about its relationship with the trustees. Well, I, I, I mean, I, you know, I just hate to make a vote. No, no, we, we, and we don't have to, and we don't have to, we don't yeah. have to at all. I mean, the, the, so I think that the issue is um, whether or not we feel that we need to vote tonight on this budget number that the friends have arrived on for their their basic budget for the year, what they they are intending to grant. Mm -hmm. um, to the library. I mean, so that's really what the question is. And so I think that we've established through this discussion that the, um, that generally speaking for, in most cases for the programming that the friends are paying directly to the vendor. And we've established that in cases where that, that is not happening, we are getting a full accounting of that and proving those expenses through the warrant every month. Um, and um, so I think those are salient facts. Um, and so we don't, I, I don't think that we have to decide this tonight. I, I think that, you know, I think we've touched on most of the issues and I think that everybody should think about uh, what their view of it is. And, you know, we can come back next month and think about, you know, or maybe with some concrete ideas if someone can, can Put forward a motion for how we want to handle that going forward. I don't. I don't see what personally and, and typically I'm, I'm. I'm handling this issue very, very much differently than I typically do because I generally view myself more as a moderator and I like to hear what everybody has to say and then and I am opining a little bit more on this one than I typically do again because I've served on both boards. I don't see the utility personally in voting for the friends to on a piecemeal basis, pay vendors for programs that are happening at the library. 
I understand the impulse to have some measure of control over our branding, and I understand our impulse to make sure that we're all swimming in the same direction. And so if, I think that we should figure out how we want to accomplish that, but I'm not sure that putting a stamp of approval on the friend's budget is the right way to do it. That's, that's my position on it. And I think that we should settle it well, with the I motion and that, we're yeah, maybe so, not ready to do that tonight. So would the motion be today that we accept the friend's budget of $30,000 without what the vote would be? Because I mean, I think as we've already decided tonight, it's a fairly fluid number. That right, it does changes over the course of the year, and right? It doesn't, you know, they it doesn't mean that much. It doesn't really mean much, right? Really. <laughs> never, back to the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Has there ever been any I, think, I, I think that you know, going back to uh, the original way things were handled might accomplish what we're looking for. In that, Jackie used to present a slate with here are the programs. And, and there were sometimes programs that came up that weren't on the slate, but you know, Sharon knew most of the things that she wanted to do for her summer programming and everything. And she would say, okay, here it is, it's $20,000. And the trustees would say, well, that looks great. Yes, ask the friends. And then the friends would decide whether they have the $20,000 to allocate to it. And, and so it isn't so much approving every little thing that goes to, you know, Lee and friends or mom and staff, it's, you know, is that the right, you know, the friends have a, a finite amount of resources and um, is that what the trustees think is the best use of those resources to spend X thousands of dollars on programming? And usually if the staff thinks that that's what the right thing to do is, then so do the trustees. But, you know, that, that is basically what the mechanism was and um, could still function that way if we just, you know, had Megan say, okay, this is what I want to ask the friends for. And, you know, a hundred times out of a hundred, we're going to say that looks great. Um, but it at least gives us a chance to look at it. And then, the, you know, then the friends approve it. And if it's $30,000, you know, then we could have had that discussion about, holy cow, that's $7,000 more than we usually ask the friends for. You know, 100% agree. So then, so basically, the, the sort of departmental budgetary workup would come through here before going to the fronts. That's that would be the, the change. Well, that would be the reinstatement, right? That's how it that's how it's kind of been. Really different mechanism. I mean, before it was anyway. Sorry, Elaine, go ahead. I was going to say that's kind of how it was because the the director would come forward and say these are the kinds of things we would like to look at for programming. These are our new ideas. These are the ones that are you know being brought forward from uh, prior years that have been successful. And the trustees would always say you know ask questions and say that's wonderful. And then it would go to the you know to the friends to say this is about the the amount of money that we need to keep level you know balanced budget and, and funding of level services. And then the friends, obviously, it's their budget, it's their money. And they would say, yes, we can accommodate that. But this is as much as we can. So it's kind of, it's not changing a lot. It's just saying maybe the first step would be, you know, to hear as trustees what the programming ideas were, not that we had, we would never question them, but we would just hear them to be able to say, we think that's a reasonable funding opportunity. Why wouldn't we question sure, them? But the, right. the difference though, Elaine, is that it used to be that the whole slate of program for the year came before the trustees and the friends before the, the budget was approved. And now what we're doing is we're approving departmental budgets and we're allowing those decisions to be made in the discretion of the staff. And I, what I don't want is to have a situation where we are retreating away back to, you have to plan all of your programming, you know, in advance for the whole year and then bring the entire slate of, of programs to us before we approve and to, to the trustees to approve what the programming is. So, so how do you, so how do you plan? I didn't understand that, but it could still be presented to us that we want to give young adults thousand dollars if we want to give adult programming x and children's programming y and how that compares to last year i mean 
we, we can still have that discussion. Also, um, when when you put up your budget of thirty thousand dollars, I mean, basically, when you send the letter out, you don't really have a goal in mind. You want your goal is we want to get as much as possible, right? So. Um, but how do you, how do you, so what's, how's the plan established then? So I, that's what it's unclear to me. Like, how do we know that how much we want to spend? What, what, what are we laddering up to? So this $30,000 comes in and gets, gets, it gets taken out piecemeal on a monthly basis, paying off to mama Steph and other things that may or may not matter because they're small and we don't see them. Like, I don't understand. Like, no, how, no, no, what, no, what's no, the bigger no, plan? No. Okay. All right. So let's back up a little bit. <laughs> so let's back up a little bit. Okay. So the way the model works now, uh, the the departmental heads mm -hmm. submit uh, each one submits a budget to Megan. Megan puts that together. They have discussion. They get it to you know what seems reasonable and providing the best and most robust programs that they can. But each department head has some discretion within his or her budget. So then the, the, the departmental budgets for programming are brought to the friends as a whole, mm -hmm. but then also, you know, with a broken out itemized, you know, per department list mm -hmm. and the friends have it, an idea, uh, you know, of, of what the each department head would like to present. And then also based on what they have historically presented over the last couple of years mm -hmm. and they have been, you know, beginning the sourcing for new programs and whatever. So it's not totally piecemeal. The, the, what the, I think where we got lost on that is that um, generally the, the vendors are paid directly by the friends from the friends treasurer and um, changes are sometimes, some, sometimes happen. Like Ronwin said, sometimes something gets canceled or something gets changed or they replace one program that gets canceled with something else that might cost less. So there are changes, but those departmental budgets are basically approved. The friends say, okay, we're okay with Gail getting, you know, $2,000 to do for after dark or whatever it is for the year. Um, but then Gail does have that pool of money and she knows that that's what she has for the year. And then she can plan around that. And if that means making some changes to, you know, a, a program she's had historically to add to something else, then she has the discretion and the mobility to do that. And the flexibility to do that, and I I don't want to see any change in that because I feel that that would also maybe seem like a rebuke to the staff, which is definitely not what we want. Mm -hmm. Because I think that they we have given them some ownership over their departmental deci decisions, and they've been incredibly successful. And I definitely would not want to, like I said, retreat from that in any way. Well, I think that just hearing different people talk about what's happened is that in the last few years, mm -hmm. we've had a new director and we've had COVID. Mm -hmm. So different situations that had occurred for a long time, mm -hmm. such as the programs being presented to the trustees first, have changed mm -hmm. because we didn't even have any programs for a couple of years and making this a new director. So it's a change of the way things are done. Yep. Um, not meant as a rebuke, and I've been on the friends for a long. Excuse me, I've been on the trustees for a long time, and, and we really never said no to a program. I mean, no. never did. So it wasn't a question of that, but but I do think it is overall that it should be understood that the trustees do have some say over the friends, and they and I don't know. The friends' budget is kind of a whole new thing. We never voted on their budget before. They didn't have a budget. Well, because it was always, it was per program. Well, it was, you know, here's the slate of programs and then it would be the whole thing and then you pull on it and then it would be the point. Yeah. It was just, it's just a different, actually it's the same thing. It's just a different way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, except that we've shifted the discretion to the staff. That's the big change that has happened. And that's, that's, I don't, I want to keep that. In, I mean, personally, I would like to see that intact because again, mm -hmm. they've done incredibly that's really well. That's important, yeah. But that doesn't affect the way things have always been done. I, I mean, it, it does in my, in my view, but we're, we're nine people. So that's why we have the discussion. And so 
I'm not sure where that I, leads I us. I like your suggestion of lets us mull on it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would love to hear a couple of suggestions for motions at the next meeting, and mm -hmm. then we can sort of see sure. where we are. Yeah. I wasn't even quite sure what we were actually voting on. Well, I wasn't either. That's why I started this conversation. I never understood it. And that's, that's, well, I don't you know, think why we ever sat down and voted on a friend's budget. It, we never voted on the budget. We never voted on the number. I think we well, I think we did. Year. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we did. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of what prompted this conversation because we voted on it last year. And I think it took both of us by surprise a little bit. We were like, well, how does that how does that all integrate? What is everybody's role here that, you know, and so it was just a big question of like, kind of what's everybody's space? That. I don't remember having done that before either. Okay. Um, so, all right, so that's, so that's where we'll leave it. If everybody would, you know, think about that. And if you have some, you know, an idea of, of, you know, from a, a language point of view, how to get our arms around this and figure out how to establish exactly how, what it is that we're approving, whether we need to be approving it and, and how we want to address that going forward. Um, I would appreciate that. So that was a more lengthy friends report than we typically have. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but it's good that you you bring it up because I'm not worried about it. Well, and I, again, like I, 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 and I keep saying this, but I feel like in every meeting that I am, am in, whether it's CLT or it's here or it's the friends or any subcommittee, the, the theme that we keep coming back to is trying to reduce the confusion mm -hmm around what the roles are, what the entities are, how everybody works together and making sure that we're collaborating, but also understanding that there are three very distinct entities here and that there's a lot of confusion among the patrons. Frankly, there are, there's a lot of confusion even within those entities. And so I, I think it behooves us to clear it up. Is there a meeting at any time during the year where the three entities get together? No, but I was thinking that very thought earlier tonight as I was walking through this analysis mm -hmm. in my head before the meeting, and I, I think that that's really something that we ought to start doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So. Um, Interesting. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, any uh, new business or <laughs> other <laughs> thoughts anybody would like to contribute? No, I'm going to take that deafening silence as a no and uh, encouragement to bring that to the meeting. So may I hear a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. 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 Thank you.